Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Our very special guest is the president of Virginia Western Community College, located just a stone's throw away from the Blue Ridge PBS studio, Dr. Robert Bobby Sandal. Dr. Sandal is a big proponent of workforce development, which will be a focus for us today. And Dr. Sandal, Bobby, welcome to the sh show. Well, Gene, it's always good to be with you and uh, on this beautiful day, mm -hmm. uh, talking about workforce. You can't, you can't get much better than that. Absolutely. I wanted to start out, Dr. Sandal, um, I, and you, you know about this, I read a report recently that um, around the c country, like uh, community college enrollment's down like 10%, and I believe you've seen some of this at Western yeah. also. Yeah. Is, this, uh, is this fallout from the pandemic to a large extent? Yeah, yeah COVID has been uh, a big hit to community colleges. We have many students that are vulnerable and uh, are fragile, and it's affected us nationwide. About 10% of community colleges are down. In the community college system in Virginia, we're down about 9%, and Virginia Western was down about 7%. Mm -hmm. uh, what's good to report right now is our fall semester, we are pretty flat. So that's, that's a good thing. In other words, we're not losing any enrollment for the fall okay. compared to last fall. Right. I mean, last year, yeah. a lot of people just like to write 2020 off. Exactly. Take right. it out of the books. Um, you know, and it seems like a lot of people who, who want to attend community college, Dr. Sandel, they're right out of high school or they're returning adults generally in, in many cases from the lower end of the income ladder they're looking for skills that can lead to better careers so that you know when money gets tight and they've lost a job due to COVID or yeah, the kid has to yeah. stay home uh, this really hurts them disproportionately it does uh, COVID hurt a lot of people a lot of jobs were lost uh, the colleges at, in the community college system have now put money aside to be able to pay for people who lost jobs due to COVID so that's we have funds for that uh, so, so money is really not a problem right now, Gene, for students who want to come back. Uh, it's, there's a lot of resources. Uh, we have a lot of people in place to be able to help people go into the right programs, find out what their needs are, and put them in, into careers or jobs that are, have high demand at this time. Mm -hmm. When you say you have money to help people come back, is, is it money, do they have to go through the school to get that, or is it money coming directly from the government, or what? No, this money comes strictly from the government. In other words, they, the, the state has provided us with money for COVID folks who lost their jobs, uh, and they're getting supplemented by the feds on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have other funding bases at the college that is able to help students. Uh, whether they're 18 right out of high school, or 25 to 40 or 50, uh, lost their jobs and want to come back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, let's talk about workforce development, yeah. among other things. And, uh, you know, the, uh, I know that workforce development and giving students the opportunity to learn those skills, whether it's with a two-year degree or a certificate program, has always been a priority for Virginia Western and you. And how did that evolve? Did that yeah. evolve? Yeah, it, you know, Virginia Western is, um, when I came to Virginia Western, workforce was not the priority that it is now. In other words, we are, we are really two distinct colleges. We are academically oriented college for those who want to go forward to wherever they want to go, but we also have a component that the college is strictly geared toward workforce. And uh, we go out of our way to set up programs and training opportunities for students, meaning students of whatever age, to be able to be prepared to go into the workforce. And we have advisory committees on all different areas throughout this region to give us advice and direction about what they need and what we can be doing to help do that. Uh, so it's important for us to be able to prepare students for jobs that there are openings in that area. I was just reading that there are about uh, 10 million jobs open throughout this country right now. Mm -hmm. And Virginia's got the same opportunities here. And Roanoke Region does. There are many jobs available. I can tell you for a fact, I had one of my legislators come by and tell me they did a review of their constituency in a lot of the industries, and the biggest need right now, there's a skills gap. In other words, our companies can't fill enough of their jobs to do all the full production they need to do, so they're looking for us to be able to offer workforce jobs to help fill those. And these are good paying jobs in uh, most cases. Yeah, these are terrific jobs, and we also have a program called G3, which is another finance program for high profile jobs you know this region is a health care providing region we got we got an, in the community college system we have the third largest number of, of health care programs of anybody and and they're all high demand it is another high demand engineering 
megatronics, uh, programs of that type. Mm. The skills, the skills, uh, the trades, the welding, machining, electricity, electronics. We offer programs in all of these areas in response to, to employer needs. I know the G3 program and the uh, community college retreat was here recently and I talked to Chancellor Glenn Dubois mm -hmm. about it. And it seemed like G3 kind of got knocked back a little bit because of COVID. But describe what G3 does. It, 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 it provides money, I believe, Dr. Sandel, for specific programs. Yeah, it, it offers, the way it's set up, it's offered for high performance jobs that have a high income threshold. So it, it's, it's geared to about five or six different programs. And we, each of the colleges were given a certain amount of money to give in that. And I can tell you, every bit of our G3 money is gone. Hmm. And we're looking to try to get some more. So the, the high impact programs, um, meaning the high performing programs that offer above average salaries, and that's the key to this. We want to get people in higher level jobs to be able to be able to support their families and do the things they need to do. So with these uh, programs, are we talking here certificate programs or two year degree programs in, in most cases? They can be both. They can be uh, certification, they can be short-term certifications or two-year associate degrees. We are finding, Gene, on these workforce programs that most folks want to come in and get something on a, on a, on a quick basis. They want to get a six weeks, nine week, a 12 week program to get them in the door so they can get started. And then what we find is the companies then will send them back and pay for their tuition to finish whatever program they want to go into. But short-term certifications is the key nationally now. And companies are in high demand from us that they want these folks. If they want to stay in and go one year, two years, or whatever they want to do, all those programs are, are there for them also. Right, so is Virginia Western dialoguing directly with the, the, the Volvo trucks and the Eldors of the world for what they need? No, no question about it. Our, our words, we go directly to them. We have people who go out and visit them, find out what the needs are, and then we customize programs to meet those specific needs. Uh, it's, there's no need to be able to training and giving people job opportunities if there are no jobs in our region. And we find that in, in, in a community college in Roanoke, 80% of our students who take programs here will stay here. And industry likes that. So they can train people that we send to them, and they can train them more, and, but they will stay here and not move to Richmond or somewhere else six months later. Right, and that's really good, good advertising for the region. Yeah. You know, if a regional partnership wants to bring in someone else, they could say, hey, look, the students that are being trained here stay in the area, they like the quality of life, you should come here too. Yeah, no question about it. When Eldor came into Botetourt County, one of the reasons they gave that they came to Botetourt was because of the Megatronics program at Virginia Western. Before, when they were being recruited by our region, they came by our campus and looked at all of our facilities and wanted to see what programs we had that would be impactful to them. In words, they wanted to know what programs we had that they could help them do their workforce. Megatronics was one of those, and then we have a litany of other programs that can fill other needs in that company. And Western has it. My son was in it. The robotics program yeah, is a really yeah, good yeah. program. I mean, robotics there. is a big deal. You know, and robotics is big up at, at Volvo, and uh, uh, a lot of companies are very automated, and robotics are things. Heck, when you do welding now, all welding is computerized. I mean, you, I mean, it's amazing what you have to do to be certified. Our machining is all computerized. It's, it's, it's just amazing. You, mm -hmm. you have to be very talented to be a, a skilled worker today, and you need extra training and education to get that. Yeah, basically, you need to become a CNC programmer in some cases. You, you got it. A CNC programmer is not easy to do. Uh, uh, so when you see all these these machines operating, you have to you have to program those machines to be able to make the parts and do the things. That, so you have to be a computer operator to know how to operate these. When you go to the automotive, everything now is is, is computerized. So in an automotive program, you have to know how to do all of that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you how old I am, but I was around when CNC first came out when it would come out on binary code on paper <laughs> yeah, tape. I got you. <laughs> so you had to read the binary tape. So. Right, yeah. Um, does, is, is it maddening sometimes, uh, Bobby, when you, um, you read these things, you hear these things where the unemployment figures are low, but that so many jobs are going unfilled and, and you know, do you think people just got out of the habit of working during the, the COVID or what? Well, it's, it's a, it's a two-edged sword there. I know a lot of people went on unemployment. And then the federal government added more money to the unemployment. So it made it very enticing, and I'm not paying politics here, but it right. made it very enticing not to work. Uh, and I notice now that some of the states are pulling that back uh, uh, because you're right. I mean, there are so many jobs available right now in this region that aren't being, you go anywhere, you go to a restaurant, you go to a company, you go anywhere, there's a job, you know, 
We need people to come to work. So I think people kind of got out of the groove there during COVID by staying home and so forth. And they've got to get back in this groove again or this economy is just not going to pull forward for us. It's funny, I was at the Outer Banks recently. I got into my reporter mode and everywhere, help wanted, help wanted. Yeah. Some places were closed for the day or whatever. Yeah. And two people offered me a job and I just said, <laughs> well, you guys need help. You, you want a job? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. it, you know it, just, it, it just seems like, uh, is that where a community college, Dr. Sandel, can really help fill that gap? Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of the community college is that we, we can respond quickly and words, we're very flexible. We don't have to wait six months to go through 20 committees to be able to set up a program. If there is a job demand in XYZ company, we can set that program up immediately to be able to respond to those needs. And we can do it in a very cost effective way for people to be able to participate. And if they don't have the funds, we've got the funding mechanism to help them go take classes. Let's talk about a few of the physical okay. changes on your campus, Dr. Sandel, since you've been there, which you know, apparently it's help, it's, will help students focus on what they want to do. The Fralin Center for Health Professions and the $30 million plus science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM building that have come online. What have those facilities done for students and for the instructors? Well, they have trans first, they've transformed our campus, but they've also transformed the mindset of what programs are going on in those particular buildings. Buildings look nice, but it's what's inside that counts. And we have the most sophisticated equipment and all the, all the bells and whistles that students need to be able to respond to business needs. We want to have the equipment that the industries have on our campus. So when they leave our campus and go to work, they're, they're, they're using some of the same equipment. The new STEM building, all the engineering programs, the megatronics, all of the lab programs, all the biomedical programs, and, and you know, th th it's all there. We, we have the best equipment, because I've said this, Gene, our students in community colleges deserve just as much as those in the four-year colleges. And we've got the equipment, buildings, and resources in place to be, and, and that drives students. Students want something uh, like that to be able to come to. Mm. Now you were, before you came to Western 20 years ago, you were the uh, president of Mountain Empire Community College yeah, in Big yeah. Stone Gap. And just talk about the difference there and, and how things have changed for community college systems. And some of the changes you're doing at Western, Dr. Sandal, are some of these other community colleges in Virginia seeing a lot of the same types of changes that you're going through? Well, you, you, you gotta be creative. You gotta, things don't happen, people gotta make them happen. When I was out in, out in, the, out in the, what you call the far Southwest, mm -hmm. out in the coal fields, out in Mountain Empire, in Big Stone Gap, and Wise, and Lee, and Scott counties out there. Wonderful region, but not many jobs. And uh, so the college was really a hub for everything because it was a, it was a, it was a, a big fish in a small pond out there. Everybody re revolved around that. It came to Roanoke, and then Roanoke had all of these other great opportunities. I said, man, I've arrived. I've come to Roanoke and they got all these opportunities. And then we, we moved the college to be able to respond to those opportunities. There they couldn't respond near as quickly as we could. Uh, we've been able to respond. We've gotten the resources to do it. We've got industry and business to support us with funds. We've got a foundation that's knocking the, knocking the socks out of it as far as money we collect. So it's, uh, people are giving money to us because we can be responsive. There's value added for what we do for their companies. Let's talk about that foundation, the Virginia Western yeah. Educational Foundation, which has been raising money uh, for the Community College Access Program, CCAP, which yeah. has helped send yeah. students in the area uh, to school tuition free. Talk about that educational foundation. Yeah. Well, the educational foundation is, 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 is just a solid entity that responds to student needs. CCAP is called the Community College Access Program and where we, we generate funds, we go to the municipalities and they all support us with monies and individuals do. And the beauty of our foundation is we match whatever they give to us. So it's, it's, a, it's not just them giving us, we match it. And then we respond to student needs. I can remember in the city schools, one of the, one of the chairman, of, chairman of their school board said, this now provides many of our students with hope that once they finish K-12, a high school, they can go to that next step, which they may have never have thought so. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these students are first generation college students that their parents have never even set foot into a college experience. And they have to meet certain criteria as far as grade point average. They do. They and do. Uh, income issues. Yeah, they have to meet an income threshold and then have to meet a GPA, a grade point average threshold, which we keep at a very uh, a level that we can respond to most student needs. And so you're closing in on the first 6.5 million. I think you started that campaign in like 2017, yeah. 2018, yeah. and you're uh, one 
challenge away yeah. to some matching yeah. grants. So yeah. let's, let's talk about getting to that, that plateau and yeah. what's next. Yeah, well, you know, we, this, this is money coming in, but it's all go, going out. So we have to generate about $6.5 million every five years just to be able to pay for the next five years. So it never stops. And if you use all that up, you got to get more money. But the response has been wonderful. And, and that's just one part of the foundation. They raise a lot more money on top of that. Uh, to, during COVID, we had a lot of students who had emergency needs. I mean, life is an issue for community college students. If the car doesn't work that day. If somebody has to stay home with the children. I mean, it's, we have life issues as far as our students, and we have to be responsive to them. We have a food bank at Virginia Western. Yeah, I wanted now. to talk yeah, about that. We have a food <coughs> bank that uh, we did a survey, and we found that many of our students were in need of a of, of even more food for their families. So we have a, a food bank that's available for them, and Kraft and Kroger are big donators to that to keep it full at all times. And that's something that really even parents, they can grab stuff to bring home with them and make yeah, a meal. Yeah, they can grab it and carry it home, and we want them to do that. And uh, and Kroger and Kraft say that program at Virginia Weston is a national model that they're now using throughout the country uh, to make that happen. Mm, and it's been, what, up for a couple of years now? Yeah, it's been a couple of years, very successful. And uh, I, I just don't think people realize the, the, the real needs that so many of our folks in our region have. I mean, you know, you go to the K-12, they've got these free lunch programs and so forth. Students need to eat. Students need to have a, a full stomach to be able to do their academic work in a, in a very first class mm -hmm. manner. And with the demographics of who's going to community college a lot of times, right out of high school, maybe first right. generation or returning adults who Exa want to get exactly. into some better debt, right. a lot of these people need help. Yeah, you know, we have, we have 10,000 plus students, so everybody's not in that category, but we do have a core of students who have tremendous needs uh, that we want to be responsive to. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got, we've got students who, who, who financially are fine, and, and they can do what they want to do, but it's that other cohort of students that we have to be responsive to. I wanted to bring up COVID real quick and how it's impacting uh, Western. I know you said that for this semester that there is, um, there'll be some options for people yeah, to, to yeah. do virtual learning. Yeah, you know, th this last year, as we all realized, was a very devastating year for all of us. 70% uh, of all of our students last year were on virtual, 70%. 30% came on campus because 30, you know, we have to have face-to-face -face with so many of our programs and labs and so forth. Right. This year, students had an option. And lo and behold, what did students choose? 50% of all of our students, again, have chosen to stay virtual. So 50% of our students are virtual. We got 30% that are hands-on and another 20% that are hybrid. They're doing a little bit of virtual and a little bit of hands-on. So, uh, you know, so, it's, so, so it hadn't gone away. COVID is still impacting us. We still require at this time, all the students on our campus have to wear a mask once they're inside. We do have social distancing inside, but it's not six feet now, it's three feet. Right. And all of our students, we, we don't require, but we highly support them having vaccinations. And now those who don't get vaccinated, faculty or students have to have be tested on a weekly basis. And, and I can tell you this, we had great, we follow all the protocols. We, did, we, had, we actually had no, COVID cases on our campus last year that, that came from our campus. We had some people from outside of the campus who came in that we had to, to work with, but uh, we followed all the protocols, all the CDC protocols, and you have to do this, all the cleaning, all the different things. So it's really, a, it's, it's mm -hmm. quite a endeavor. And of course, there's some people that are going to school that are impacted by the fact that they have kids and the kids are out of <laughs> yeah, school, right. in and out of school. So they may be saying, well, let me go hybrid or or uh, right. virtual right for now and see what happens. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of the community college again. We can offer those options. So you gotta have options, Gene. And, and when you deal with community college students, you gotta be flexible, you gotta have options, and you gotta be able to s gear them toward programs that can meet their particular needs. Mm. You think the community college system, Dr. Sandal in Virginia, has been good about being flexible or realizing that this is a different cat than someone who's going right out of high school to a four-year school. Yeah, yeah, and no question about it. You know, the, the big four-year universities, their enrollment is strong. Now, the big ones, UVAs and the, and the techs, they're strong, but other colleges are struggling just like we are, four-year colleges. Um, uh, it's just, um, uh, it, we, we see this, as our chancellor said the other day, last year we could, we could just close down and do things. This year, we, we got them on our campus. We have to do different ways to be able to treat students, to be able to be supportive of their needs. I'm wondering if you think if a lot of businesses that require some technical expertise or whatever are, are gonna say, you know what, we need to start uh, gearing up our in-training program so that we can get kids in here 
that have had one or two years of school but show an aptitude yeah. that maybe we can't wait. We can't just, you know, say if you don't have a four-year degree in this particular subject, you're not a candidate. I wonder if there's any kind of a mindset yeah, change. I, yeah, I, th I think that's happening. The, the way it works, about two-thirds of all jobs do not require a four-year degree. Two-thirds of all jobs do not. But we find a lot of industries have, have said, you know, it, what we're doing is, is a lot, but still not enough. So they're doing their own in-house training programs, trying to prepare whatever folks come in the door there to be prepared to go. So they're asking us, do what you can do, but we're going to be doing some things also. And then we may bring you in to help them also, make them even more supportive of what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So industry is not standing by. Uh, it, it's just quite a, a quagmire out there as far as getting things done to get the work done. Right, you know, when you read things and you hear things, Dr. Sandel, about uh, the fact that 75, 80% of all manufacturing jobs are gonna be automated within yeah, the next right. 20 years or so. Yeah. What are people gonna do for work? Are they gonna have to just all become programmers or, w you know, and, and is this further gonna shape what happens at the college level? Well, it's gonna shape what we do as far as what programming we do. It's, uh, automation is, you know, we grew up, Gene, that was talking about automation was going to change things. Well, that's happening. I mean, we live in it now, and it's only going to happen more. And I think the, the highly skilled jobs, the community college can start you there, and uh, those that don't go into those areas are going to have to go into service-oriented type occupations or other areas that there are going to be many more jobs for them also. Hmm? I have a few minutes left. I okay. wanted to hit a couple of things. Talk about the, what kind of a synergy, Bobby, is there between Western and, say, the Freeland Biomedical Research Institute or, or VTC Medical School or uh, Radford University Carilion. Is there some synergy there? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of synergy there. You know, I can talk about Radford now over at, uh, Radford's has taken over Jefferson College right. over at Carilion and they have a four-year nursing program. All of our two-year nurses can transfer straight into Radford um, program as junior level students or they can take it online. Uh, once that, once that happened, uh, that uh, transformation of Radford going into uh, Carilion, we pulled from them their physical therapy program and their occupational therapy program and, and surge tech because they were associate degree level. So we, we have picked up those programs. Uh, up at the Radford University in Virginia Tech, there are many programs that our associate degree programs can transfer straight into and get full credit for what they do. Um, so you gotta, you gotta have relationships out there. The biomedical, you know, um, uh, we run a biomedical program at our, at our, the first two years of that. A lot of our students can now transfer over to, to, to uh, the Biomedical Institute. Mm -hmm. we, we do the technician level programming. And it, every technician, you have, probably have usually seven technicians to one of those PhDs, okay? You gotta have those folks who make it all work. So the technicians, uh, just like here in this operation here at the, at, the, at the station, you gotta have technicians make it happen. Mm -hmm. A couple of minutes, if I wanted to ask you, um Talk about, we sort of touched on this, but talk about what the hot programs are right now at Western. Well, hot programs now, cybersecurity is a hot program. I mean, and we are, we're, we're nationally certified in cybersecurity. Uh, it's amazing. And you can't, if they don't want to come here, then go to Northern Virginia. And there's so many jobs there that's available for them. Uh, hmm. uh, every healthcare program we have, Gene, is full with a waiting list. Really? Every single one with a waiting list. And they're high demand programs. Uh, uh, Megatronics, engineering, all the skill programs, all your welding and, and machining and, and those programs, man, and the, the, the demand is just there. Uh, electronics, electricity, air conditioning. You know, we have a very large culinary arts program. Uh, and, and the, one which has been best, expanded. One of the best programs in the country. And you know, in this region, everybody likes to eat, right Gene? <laughs> and so yeah. we, got a, we got a tremendous program down there that's fitting all those particular needs for this community. That's the Al Power the program. Al Power, yeah, yeah. Go a couple of minutes left, I wanted to just, uh, uh, talk about a couple of things. And do students though, Bobby, need to be more aware of the opportunities out there? Does Western do something that kind of help students hone in on there are jobs here, there are jobs here? We try to. We have, we have recruiters who go into the high schools and we talk about a lot of our programs. But, but I would be quite honest, a lot of our students still are not fully aware of all those opportunities that are available for them and how these programs can transfer or put them right into the world of work. You know, we have a large number of students, but they're still, there are a lot of adults out here in our region right now that are not working. And uh, the opportunities in our college are there for them. Mm -hmm. And we try everything we can with, with programs of this type, with, with newspapers, with television, with everything we can to make people responsive. And we try to do workshops and seminars to make 
make our universal population aware. There are a lot of opportunities. They don't have to be with Virginia Western. There are a lot of educational opportunities available in our region with money there to help them move forward. Just one minute left, Dr. Sandel. So in general, the, the roundabouts on Colonial Avenue, the yeah. new buildings at Western, does it feel like a different campus in many ways when, when you arrived 20 years yeah, ago? There's no question about it. Uh, Virginia Western has is, is, is been in a transformational mo mode this last 20 years. We've got wonderful facilities. Whether you like them or not, we've got these roundabouts. And, get used uh, to them. And they get used to them. I just want people to go around them and not over them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've had some of those people do that too. But it, it's a, uh, Virginia Western has everything needed for people in our region to be successful. We just want people to take full advantage of it. Well, Dr. Sander, we're going to have to leave it there. It's always great to talk to you. Yeah, pleasure and to talk with you, Gene, and, and I appreciate you asking me to be here today. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters. Have a good day. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.